How did you think the course held up as far as like the water and stuff goes? It rained a whole lot. It, it held up pretty good, actually. The only thing that was awful is, listen, they got to figure out these tee pads. Those tee pads were awful. All right, they let's jump. Dro- they started drooping in the middle of the tee pads. Yeah, like let's jump holes. to that photo, Silas. If you can throw that photo up real quick. I don't know if you saw all these posts, Yuli. We've got a photo from, uh, I believe it was James Conrad. We've got one of Simon Lazat, and then we have one from Adam, who are all basically just saying how bad the tee pads were. I was on that card with Conrad. Like he, what happened biffed. there? He just slipped and just absolutely <laughs> launched. A bunch of mud? Did he, he was covered in mud? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I felt so bad. He was so mad too. And walking down the fairway, I did the worst <laughs> thing you could ever do. Cause he obviously biffs it and he's going, he's going, he's trying to get Eagle on that hole, right? That's hole 11. Okay. And we're walking up the fairway and I'm like, yeah, I think you went out right by that sign right there. And he looked at me cause he was in this horrible place. And he looked at me, he's like, like all surprised. And I'm like, I'm just kidding. Here. <laughs> on the fairway, Cause there's no way he would have watched his shot. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, and, yes. Uh, he hit me with his umbrella. He's like, you son of a, he like hit me with his umbrella. It was a pretty funny thing. Uh, it was uh, crazy. Those tee pads all throughout practice. I thought they were fine. I, I was a little nervous on a couple of them being a little grippy where my leg, my like foot kind of caught. Yeah. And for anyone that has knee injuries, that that's like the last thing you want to have happen is your, yeah. your, your knee go this way, but your foot staying behind or, or your body going this way, but your knee staying behind. But yeah, once that water, once those storms came in, Yuli, those things are not good when the storm, they, no. they got all lumpy um, towards, I, I like the frame idea, right? The wooden frame idea, but really, really bad when the front of the tee pad goes down and then yeah. up, like yeah. they were basically like a dip. So some scary stuff. We're going to always talk about tee pads because as players, the only time we ever want to feel comfortable is on the T. That's yeah. it. Any any other time, sure, whatever. But on the T, I feel like that should be like the safe area. We shouldn't be worrying about hurting ourselves. And then the other thing is that I that I do get frustrated with, especially on the tour right now, is when we go into a place and they're cutting out new new holes a week before the tournament, two mm. weeks before the tournament, and they're cleaning up these places. Because the roots that are left on the ground, like, Scary. and like, you'll stub your toe. You'll, you know, the mulch was great because I was thinking about this and I was complaining about it. I'm like, this mulch is horrible because there's big old sticks like this big and you've, you've tossed it out of the way with your foot and then three more sticks come up somehow. And you're like, what the heck? And you toss more and then you're just like, okay, this, this is impossible. But then I was thinking, like, if we didn't have the mulch and those sticks everywhere, it would have been the mud would have been it would have been it, wild. It wouldn't have been playable. So, no. so it was good that we had it. But at the same time, what do you want me to give you? Some good news. Yes, they're laying down sod. That's the That's goal. That's what I heard. That's yeah. what I heard. They're going to try to make all happens, those fairways grass, which is going to be incredible. When that happens, it'll be the best course on tour. It will be absolutely as far incredible. As like aesthetically, it'll be the best. It'll be the best course on tour visually. I th- I think because it's already good. You have the open holes, which are whatever. Even the par five, I felt like filmed really well on on camera. Mm-hmm. As far as being able to see what was actually happening in the distance and 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 everything, especially with the tall grass on the sides and the white stakes, I thought it looked really nice, and it didn't really look like a like a. What the you call that, it as the traditional golf course nine. I think they could do a better job of nine of clearing right away a spot to where then you could see the fairway kind of go. So it's not just high grass and we're not really seeing, Yeah, you know what I mean? Like the part the, five though, the, the tough thing there is like, we're throwing our second shots like over the green. Like this is where if disc golf had millions of dollars, that green would be a lake. Yes. And now that hole all of a sudden is like, this is one of the coolest holes on tour. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. But, but if I'm being honest, I, I think that once they put the saw down and if, if it works, it'll be one of the best places we play. I still think it's soft. I think the course was really soft. And I think once you put it, saw down, it'll, it'll be even softer. So I, 
I hope they don't like like 18. They took the OB away on the left hand. I don't know why you would do that. Like leave the OB. Like just leave leave all the OB. <laughs> I don't know why they're taking OB and put put they push the OB farther back on 18. And now if you kick farther in on 18, you get double penalized. It's well, not even so- single single penalize well let's talk about that a little bit let's talk about ob in the woods what are your thoughts on because i I, you know there's pushback some people think there shouldn't be any ob in the woods and we should we should be able to scramble and that's what they want it's tough i think i think as a course designer like for example hole hole seven hole seven has a tree right in the middle of the fairway Mm -hmm. i love that tree because it's far enough and close enough at the same time for you to be able to shape something the way a disc can it. actually fly. So it gives you an obstacle right there. I don't think it's very cool looking to me. Mm, I don't think it looks not. good. But the way they're trying to make you shape a shot makes that hole actually pretty difficult. To mm-hmm. where if you got rid of it, it would just be a gimme. But mm-hmm. they placed it at a spot to where it's almost a perfect distance for you to be able to shape from left to right to right to left and vice versa, different ways, whether you're left-handed, you're throwing sidearm backhand or, or whatever. When you get to holes like six, there are trees that don't make a lot of sense on where they place them to where at the end of your flight, you could kick those and go out of bounds where somebody could kick the same tree and stay in bounds. I don't like that. Yes. So if you're going to have OB up there, that's random. That's random luck where you get double penalized for a good shot, right? Hole 14 is another really good example. 100%. 100%. With the OB down the left-hand side. 17, great hole. You kick the trees on the left and you go out of bounds left, you deserve it. That's a bad shot, right? And it gives you enough shot shape uh, distance to be able to control something to go into a green. Now... When you place out of bounds, like I said, on hole six, pretty tight, some good shots go OB. Some bad shots don't. I don't like that. So if they're going to keep making, I don't mind OB in woods. If there's no bad trees to kick and there's no roots to hit to to shoot you out of bounds. Um, But what happens is it makes the course play short when you take those trees out. Because now people can blast as far as you can, go out of bounds, or be safe, and then have a short little upshot. So then you have to make longer holes with no with none of those I call them bogey trees in the middle of the fairway. So it's a tough thing. It's up to the course designer to really figure out what the correct distance is. Because you can do it Mm -hmm. if you place a tree like on hole seven on hole six. It's still a fair shot shape. Just take the other ones out and have OB everywhere. That's fine to me because if you hit one of those trees, you deserve it. And this is what I'll say with, in regards to OB in the woods, I think it is needed a lot of the time because I don't think there is any skill in chucking a forehand roller as far as you can. In the woods, I just don't think that's skillful. Like maybe sure there is skill in throwing it through a gap and for then it to hit and turn into a roller, but you have no idea where that disc is going to go. You yeah. don't know what tree it's going to hit. You don't know what's happening. All you're trying to do is advance it as far as possible. You know what? I didn't really see that often in the woods this I week. Rollers. I didn't see rollers. Why? Because there's OB and that's scary. Like hole 18. I bet if there wasn't OB, I think a lot of people throw maybe even Calvin, if he, can, he couldn't throw a sidearm, but maybe a, a roller becomes a play there because it's way easier to hit a, this, a gap this big when your disc is vertical than when your disc is horizontal. And to me, it's just like, I don't think that's really skillful. I don't like that style of disc golf of just chucking and praying. And um, the only way to take that away is to add that risk of like, wait a second, like my disc could go OB. And I think Niklas did a perfect example of explaining the difficulty of hole six. I'm with you. I don't know if you need that OB right away on that hole to where you can get screwed, but having that OB for his second shot, like he, he made a risky play by going for it and he could have played it a much different way. I I like that. I like seeing having to play. What should I do here versus like, this is the only play. 
I also think that 17 and 18 were perfect finishing holes because it made you do the exact opposite shot back to back tee shots. Yes. Yes. Like you have to have the skill of pulling the disc from left to right off of a tree and getting it to flex out. And then the next mm -hmm. one, you have to throw a subtle hyzer flip, complete opposite shots. I really like the, um, the idea behind that.